Hey everybody, Mike Day here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. In this video, we're going to be forming, pouring, and stamping a big deck around a pool. And we're also, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about money, you know, about estimating and bidding jobs, you know, and making sure that you guys don't sell yourself short when it comes to what you charge for, say, a job similar to this, or any type of concrete patio or floor or slab or whatever you're doing, but... Right now, I just want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing here. Now, for this pool, we're actually setting up and forming the inside coping. And some of these pools that we do, this is a vinyl pool. Some of them, will, the pool guy will actually put the coping on. But with this one, we're actually putting on our concrete coping. And then we have a liner we put in there that makes it look like a rock face coping. Now these forms I actually got from uh, Concrete Countertop Solutions. They're called Z Pool Forms. So you can go to their website and check these out. We use these over and over and over again. This isn't a one and done type system. So you, we, I've got multiple uses out of these. I've probably got 15 or 20 pools on this one set right here alone. Um, they are they are fairly expensive to buy initially, but you definitely make your money back in the first pool or two that you do. So they they pay for themselves really really quickly. And when you know when I get called in to to bid a pool like this, setting these forms up around the pool is, is I kind, it's kind of like a separate line item for me. I actually charge by the lineal foot to do these, and we get quite a bit of money. I mean it, it's. Uh, it's not anything you're just going to know how to do without having a little bit of training. So you got to spend some time to to learn how to put these on and learn how to do it right. And then it comes out looking really, really nice. When I when I bid a pool like this with these forms, I get $40 a lineal foot just to do this part right here, just to do the forming. And then obviously you got to come back and strip them and you got to keep them clean. Um, so... For a basic pool, I mean, for a pool like this, this has about 100 lineal feet. So that's 4,000 bucks just to do this part right here, the, as far as the setting up and the stripping. So it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good uh, thing to add on to your business here if you don't do this type of thing. We, I, you know, I talk about stuff like this, the Z pool forms, how to, how to do them, how to set them up in my concrete underground private membership so if you want to learn more about that and how to make more money doing similar things to what you're already doing you definitely want to join that membership now uh, link for that's down in the description too guys you can see the red part the red part is the liner and you can buy all kinds of different shapes of liner different textures of liner to go inside these I've basically just got two this rock face one is the most uh, popular one that we use and then I've got a smooth face one that we use uh, every once in a great while, but this one's definitely what people like the most. And it, you know, the forms are pretty rigid. They actually, they actually tap into the part that holds the liner on on the pool. So, on every single pool that we've done so far, we haven't had to install the part that holds the form on. It's already been there. So we just show up, we tap our forms into what the track that's already there. And then we use their special tool for stripping after we get all done and, and strip the forms off. What we're doing, this this is a pretty good size pool deck. If I remember right, it was around 1,500 square feet. And the only straight parts of it were the, you know, the two, the right and the left here. You'll see we're going to use some 2 by 4s for that. Everything else we're using some PVC forms because it's got curves to it. We definitely like those one by four PVC forms for doing curves. Those boards are actually pretty expensive too. Azac is the name brand of the one we use. But we've had those for, you know, multiple years, not just one year, but multiple years. If you, if you keep good care of them, if you scrape them, so you can use them over and over again. We, what we like about them is they're pretty rugged. They bend really easy and, and they're pretty rigid. So. The 60, we buy them in 16 footers and then if we have to cut them down we'll cut them down but we'll try not to cut any more than we have to because because they are pretty expensive so the key to you know forming this up something like this not really you know the homeowner just wanted a good size deck there wasn't any like perfect shape he wanted 
other than those the straight sides on the right and the left the north and the south that you're looking at right here he just wanted to get his most the most space as he could and he kind of he hired somebody to come in here and do the grade work the earthwork they backfilled in around the pool they that's actually this is actually a lot more backfill around the pool than most pool guys do usually the pool guys will do about three or four feet around the outside of the pool after they get their forms in and get everything done and then anything above and beyond that you know usually someone else has to come in and do unless the pool guys doing the deck himself but um, most pool guys don't do decks that are much bigger than let's say four to six feet around the pool especially stamp concrete we get asked to do a lot of stamp concrete around pools up here where we're from you can see we're putting in Luke's over there on the left putting in that straight form and then we're attaching the curve to it and then we're just gonna try to get as much out of this much out of this uh, gravel as we can without getting too too close to the edges he can always bring in some more gravel afterwards if he thinks he needs more backflow around the outside but we just want to get a gradual curve around this thing so when I come down when I bid these you know when I'm when people come down and ask me for estimates obviously I've got to make a, a ride down now this one was about an hour and a half away from the shop it's right on the ocean so that's my first trip down is just come down make a site visit I meet the person and I give them a rough idea. I can I can usually give them a pretty rough idea right there of what it's going to cost, and that will that will let me know whether I need to go home and actually send them a written proposal, and I can fine tune the the price after I get home a little bit. Because I've been doing this so long, it's just you know I I, I know what is involved. I know my square foot prices. I know what the things cost me, the materials and all that. And then so the site visit also lets me look at the you know where I'm gonna back a truck in what's the access to this thing for this one it wasn't that great actually the only access was over there where you see the the back into my pickup truck and obviously I can't reach the other end of the pool from this so I gotta ask myself do we end up pumping this do we wheelbarrow it do we shoot it with a conveyor truck I mean what do we do uh, so that's part of that first site visit and that's also part of the first estimate I give him so now what I'm doing is you can see I got my tape measure out and we're, we're trying to get make sure the two sides are both the same distances from the pool make sure that's nice and parallel but what I what I can also do after I get the form set up is I can get my my uh, really accurate square footage here with all these curves what I'll end up doing you'll see here in a minute is I'm gonna measure out this in different pieces different squares to get my square footage really really accurate and then when I do my quote you know my quote is gonna end up being uh, based off a square foot price so I'll estimate the square footage at first and then I'll tell them you know if it's if it's the estimation is a little high with square footage or if it's a little bit low we're gonna adjust the price based on what the exact square footage ends up being what we end up doing and most homeowners are like okay you know I understand that's that's perfectly fine I've never really had an issue with that and the basic you know for me for me doing a stamp concrete job around a pool my base price always starts at $15 a square foot and that's gonna cover us setting the forms these outside forms it's going to cover four inches of concrete, the wire mesh reinforcement, and then, you know, the labor to pour and stamp the concrete, to come back and clean it, saw it, and then to come back and seal it. So 15 bucks a square foot, and, you know, if it's if it's a thousand square feet, then that's that's 15,000 bucks to get this pool deck done. And if it's 1500 square feet then you're talking like twenty two twenty three thousand dollars to get a nice stamp concrete pool deck around here so it is it, it it's expensive it's a lot of money I know but the skill the skill that you have if you know how to do this much stamp concrete in one pour then you got to charge correctly for your skill like you can't undercharge for what you know your experience your your skill level how well you do something is is a, really a value and you don't want to underestimate your value 
And you don't want to undercharge for your value either. I mean, that affects the whole industry when you do that. So, I mean, if you're just learning, if if you're just learning how to do stamp concrete or if you're just learning how to do concrete, you're probably not going to attack this whole thing at once. You might do it in, in different sections. And then, uh, you know, your value is going to be based on what you know and how much you can do. So, but as you get, as you get more experience, you get better and better in what you do and basically all your work comes from word of mouth. Um, you got to make sure you charge appropriately for that. That's really, really important. And that's basically what I've lived my life doing is, is just making sure that my prices are at a point where they need to be, not where I worry about where other people's prices are. Um, I don't care what anybody else charges. I don't care how low they are. I don't care if I'm higher than everybody else. I feel like I'm going to charge this because I'm worth it, because I know I do a good job. You don't have to worry about me when you hire me. Um, I'm going to get the job done. I'm going to be there when I say I'm going to be there. And it's going to come out right. And I'm going to make sure it comes out right. So, and I feel like that's worth a lot of money to most people. They don't want to have to worry about when they hire you if the job's going to come out right or not. So, again, when, you know, when you charge for this and you're good at it, you're good at what you do, make sure you charge appropriately for it. Don't undercharge. If, so, you know, I can come in here and give an estimate, let's say, like I said, 15 bucks a square foot for 1,500 square feet, 20, let's say 23,000 bucks. The guy goes out and gets two or three estimates, and I'm five or six thousand higher than everybody else. You know, one guy, let's say one guy comes in at fifteen thousand, and the homeowner calls me back, and he's like, "Geez, Mike, I don't know, you're pretty high. You're uh, you're eight thousand dollars higher than the lowest estimate." And I'm like, "Well, I mean, you should go, go with the low guy then if you want to. I'm not gonna, I'm definitely not gonna lower my price. That's for sure. I'm not gonna come down." And I can just tell the guy, go, look, you know, price, price is, it is what it is. If usually when it comes to concrete, you know, you're going to have guys that are low, guys that are high, guys that are in the middle. What you got to do as a homeowner is you got to do your homework and you got to figure out just what are you going to get for your money? What's the value you're going to get? Um, do you want to make sure it's done right the first time? I mean, I can give you 20 references right now that you could call and that will tell you that, you know, hey, if you hire this guy, if you hire Mike Day, it's gonna, it's gonna be done right. You're not gonna have to worry about it. Can the other guy do that? You know, can the $15,000 guy do that? I don't know, it's just, if he can, then great, go with him. I don't mind, you know, that's fine. I, if I lose a job out to somebody like that, I lose a job out. I'm not gonna stress over it, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll just, on to the next job. But I can tell you over time that Rarely do I ever lose out any jobs because my price is higher. You know, I find that most people are willing to pay more to know, just have the reassurance that their job is going to come out right. And it's the one, you know, if, if somebody's just shopping based on price, then you probably don't want to work for those people, to be honest with you. And, I, you know, when I was first starting out, 19, 20 years old, I just wanted any job I could get. I didn't care. It was just I was trying to establish myself. I wanted to, I just wanted to work. Obviously, I needed the money. Uh, being a young, a young adult, still some, you know, a teenager at some point. I didn't care back then. But as, as I, I did business more and more and I started to understand business more and more, you know, I didn't want to work for the people who were just cheap, the nickel and dimers. It's just, it wasn't worth it. You know, it's just that you got to charge your your value. And I don't know how else to stress that to you guys. But anyway, so we're getting into the poor here. And you can see what the reach was. We did end up getting the conveyor truck. That, that reach on that conveyor will go 40 feet. Um, actually, look, you know, standing there, I thought he would reach further than he did. I didn't think we'd have to use this long chute. I thought we'd just be, you'd be able to use the eight footer, but he just didn't go quite as far as we thought he would. So luckily we have all different length chutes. We got a 16, we got a 12, we got an eight. So it, I mean, it made it a little more work to do this, but it wasn't too bad. 
we got it out. We're using the 4,000 PSI. We got fiber mesh in the concrete, and you can see we got the wire there. Pulling that wire up as we go. You know, my experience with wire and in the concrete like this is when you pull it up. I've even I've even got video of this, but I, I don't have it on this video. But I did take video of this when you pull it up and then you go back and you walk on it. I mean, yeah, it does push it down from where you just pulled it up, but it doesn't push it back down on the dirt like it is right here. It, once the rocks in the aggregate get under the wire, the wire does stay up into the concrete. Um, and then, really, what's important is the sub base. You know, making sure the sub base is has got a, a good base of gravel. It's compacted really, really well. Uh, that's that's the real key to keep this stuff from cracking. And then putting your joints in where they should be, your joint spacing and all that. So it's just the three of us today on this one. It's a pretty good size one for three of us. Um, as well as you know gonna stamp this thing we're actually going to use texture mats on this one so that helped make the stamping a little bit easier than say doing a, like an ashlar slate or a stone pattern or something like that this is this is just a textured stamp which is probably the easiest one to do and it's also the easiest one to learn on I think we do a ton of stamping you can charge you can charge a lot of money for stamping you can charge twice as much money at least what I found, we can charge twice as much money to stamp a pool deck like this as we can to do a, a broom finish. So if you're at seven, eight, nine dollars for a broom finish, you can charge double that for the stamp. You know, the difference, kind of the difference between the two obviously is the knowledge on, of how to stamp versus how to broom. Brooming's a little bit easier to learn. But with stamping, you know, you, you know, you're not just done that this day. I mean, we're going to get it stamped today. But then we actually got to come back tomorrow, the next day. We got to wash it all down, clean it, saw it, because you don't typically saw the same day you stamp. So there's a there's a whole extra day involved coming back that day, and then you got to come back another day to do the ceiling. Which I mean, if you do a broom, you got to come back the next day to do a ceiling. So that's not really an added day, but there is that one added day of washing and sawing that typically with a broom finish. We'll get the joints in the same day. So we'll we'll get it poured, we'll get it broomed, we'll get it jointed all the same day. Um, and then we'll just have to come back and seal it. So there's another whole day added, which, you know, if you ask yourself, well, it's enough, just one more day, but why does that mean you have to double your price? Well, part of the doubling of the price is the the training and the skill that you have to stamp. There's a lot more skill that goes into stamping than does broom finishing. A lot more. Because there's a lot more that can go wrong. There's a lot more you can mess up. And there's a lot more you need to know if, if things aren't going quite right. Um, concrete doesn't always cure perfectly. There's, sometimes the surface will start to crust over. Or if it's windy or, you know, sometimes it, if the loads don't dry perfectly even, how do you, where do you start? Where do you stop? Where do you continue to make everything look uniform and texture you know if uh, you don't want to start with the concrete's too soft and have the texture look like it's really good texture in one place and then you get over on the other side and it's the concrete's hard and you don't have the same texture so there's just there's a lot more of a knowledge base to learning to stamping which you can charge a lot more for once you know it and once you're good at it Right now, there was only one access for the truck, so we're getting that conveyor truck out of there, and we're backing in the second truck, getting him ready. And if you look at look at how we poured this thing right here, like where the screeds are sitting, you know, we got to take that into consideration when we are figuring out, okay, where do you think we might start stamping this? As you'll see here shortly, once we get this poured finally, then we'll show you we'll show you how we start stamping this. We, got, we put a little more yardage on that first truck, the conveyor truck, than we did the second truck because we knew that having that conveyor would make access a little bit easier than just pouring right out of the chute. So this is, it actually went exactly as we were hoping for. We could, we could back this second truck right up. We wouldn't have to pull it very far. We could just pretty much reach with the chutes. We're being really careful around that, that, that Z pool form that we put in there we vibrate that really really good we tap it 
we mag float it so it's really nice and even we want to make sure we don't have any uh, air holes or bug holes in that thing when we when we strip it off and then we want to make sure that the surface the top of it is right flush so everything looks really really nice when we get that form stripped off it's almost it's actually almost more work to strip the form off than it is to put it on because you got you want to be really really careful they have a they have a special tool that you you slide up in behind it but it actually it goes up against the vinyl on the on the liner there so you want to be real careful you don't damage the liner at all but it does have a nice piece of like rubber on it to help protect that but sometimes that thing just unsnaps uh, harder in places than others and that's probably the biggest struggle with getting that off so the pour the pour went pretty good luckily it's kind of cloudy out today and it's, it's a little bit cool as you can see where we're in sweatshirts so if this was sunny and 90 degrees we I don't know if we'd probably do all of this in one day with the stamping with the brooming we would but the stamping we might have thought twice about it so this is the first part of the finishing process where we stamp we get back on it with skids and we get it all floated out really nice make sure all the bull float marks are floated out make sure we bring up a pretty decent pace to the surface and the guys usually have me do that because I'm lighter <laughs> I'm the lightest guy on the crew so I can get on it I can get on it the earliest without sinking in the skids we're using the skids we're using make this pretty easy I can float right along on that slide right back so it actually makes for a pretty pretty quick process what's nice about having two other guys that really know what they're doing is you know I can I can kind of take my time and make sure I do this really really nice while because I know that Luke and Darren can get started on the stamping without me they don't really need me to get it started they could they can kind of work their way along by themselves and using the big match you'll see we're gonna we're gonna get started here in just a minute using those big match they cover quite a bit of square footage so it goes pretty fast we got two kinds of mats they're both stone textured but they they both have like different degrees of texture on them so it makes for a nice balance between the just using one texture we'll edge the outside form we'll, we'll round that edge off just to help strengthen a little bit the guys will go around they'll kind of mag float the outside edge just to kind of to help me get that done a little bit quicker but you know we're just waiting for the perfect time to get on this we don't want to get on it too too early where we step on those mats those mat mats aren't very thick so it's pretty easy to step on them and leave a footprint we actually do have these special shoes that we wear on our feet that have a little bit more base to them so it can spread spread the weight out a little bit better versus just stepping on it with your boot so I'm not quite finished yet mag floating, but as you can see, the, the concrete's getting ready to stamp. So Luke's just starting out. We're using powder on this. Luke's gonna roll the edges first, get some texture up against the edge. We don't worry too much at this point about getting that powder in the pool. It floats right on the water. So when you get back the next day, you can actually just kind of skim it right out of the water. It doesn't really cause any damage to the pool or anything like that. Otherwise, if it you know if we if it did, we could cover the pool with plastic, and it would get most of the powder on the plastic. But what we found by doing this multiple times is that stuff just it doesn't it doesn't mix with the water; it just stays on top, and then you can just kind of kind of scoop it right off the next day. So you can see how the guys are starting out. They're starting out right kind of where we finished up screed in that first truck. And the mats, the red mats we get from Mar we got those from Marshalltown actually, and uh, those those texture mats work really really good. There's a bunch of companies that have those mats, especially the stone texture ones. So if you're thinking of learning how to do stamp concrete, you can check out. I do I, I teach you that in the Concrete Underground, but I also have just a separate stamp concrete course down in the description below too. You could check that out, and I go into great detail about the timing of the stamping and this and that and about using different stamps but this is probably the easiest stamp to learn with right here because you can just turn them any which way there's no real wrong way to turn them versus other stamps that kind of click together you know you got to be careful about how you start which way you go 
not to get a stamp turned the wrong way. These, these actually look really, really nice, I think. You can move right along. Two guys can move right along pretty fast with these two if you know what you're doing. Especially if you know like how the concrete feels under your feet. Like right there with Luke, he's kind of tamping that with his feet. You can feel it. You can feel how soft it is, how firm it is. How So that tells you just how fast you got to move as you're moving along here. And we know that because there was a little time difference between the first truck and the second truck, you know, we know based on how much further we have to go to get off this first truck, just how fast we have to go before we need to get on that second truck too. One good thing, like I said before, is the sun's not out today. It's a little cloudy. So if the sun was out, you know, that we'd have to pick up the pace a little bit more. Now with three of us back on it, you know, one guy can focus on making sure the edges are rolled, getting the release all spread out in front of these guys so all these guys really got to focus on is just laying the stamp down tamping it picking the next one up and just keep moving that makes the whole process go so much quicker so like i said i mean you can see some lines from the stamps right if you look back here it looks like you can almost see squares those don't show up the next day those are just from in the release powder We've never had those kind of show up where you can actually see those the next day after it's washed and sealed. So I, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. We do overlap the stamps as we pick them up. We overlap them about six inches and then we re-tap those edges just a little bit just to make sure we're not tapping in one edge a lot harder than another. You can see I'm over there coming back off that edge where we started. That second truck started to firm up a little bit right off there. So. The good thing about the texture mats is you can start almost anywhere and go back and meet where you are already and not have to worry about lining up lines and grooves like you would if you had a, an astro slate pattern. It's always good to have plenty of stamps too. You always want to have a few more than what you think you need just in case. So this makes for a pretty full day when you come down here and you pour stamp something this size. Um, it makes for a pretty busy day and by the time you're done you're pretty much beat even though you know it doesn't really look too hard to do it, ma it makes for a pretty hard day so what we'll do here is now we'll just this will be it we'll clean this up I mean we'll just clean up our stamps get them loaded head back home and then tomorrow we'll come back we'll saw all our joints in the next day you can see the joints I didn't get the washing and the joining part but you can see how we sawed and we got it cleaned up we get all the powder we, we wash that off with a pressure washer and a little bit of dawn dish detergent and water and we scrub it and this is actually the following day after that after it all dries out you know I'll come back and I'll spray on the first coat of sealer we really like that sealer from deco Crete supply their d1 sealer I'll have a link for that down in the description if you want to check that out um, that's a really good concrete sealer. It's, it's a combination, a little bit combination of a penetrating sealer and a topical sealer. So it penetrates down into the concrete, but it also leaves, it also leaves enough of uh, coating on the surface to help highlight the colors. You can see what this would have looked like if the sun was out the day we were stamping. I mean, it would have been a little bit of spotty in, in between all the trees. It actually makes it a little difficult to see the sealer going on, but I think you guys get a pretty good idea. I ended up doing three coats on this because that sealer dries pretty quick so you can get three really light coats on is what you want you don't want to put this stuff on too thick you don't want to puddle it you just want to get it on nice and even and it ends up making the concrete look really really good this concrete had a at a gray integral color in it and then we use that charcoal release so it's got like a two-tone effect so that's how we got this done guys that's how much something like this costs that's how much you should be charging let me know down in the comments if you charge differently how you charge why you charge that way that'd be interesting to know and we'll talk about it in the comments thanks again guys for watching we'll see you on the next one